Welcome to the InSync Insurance Podcast. I'm your host, Dawn Cross, and today we'll be discussing skincare basics and treatments with guest Hannah Kalita from Kalita Beauty Clinic and Training Academy. If you enjoy our podcast, make sure to leave a rating on your favourite podcast directory. So if you could just start off introduce yourself and what you get up to at your academy. So I'm Hannah Kurlita. I am the founder of the Topmost Beauty and Business Academy and the Kurlita Beauty Clinic. Um, so we specialise in semi-permanent makeup and advanced skincare. And we also cover basic beauty like nails, HD brows, lashes, that kind of thing. So yeah, a lot really, but we love it. <laughs> That's brilliant. How did you get into it? Like, was it something you've always wanted to do or did you kind of um, stumble into it almost? Um, it's something I always wanted to do. I remember when I was 10, my mom let me have my um, first set of nails. Mm. And then, I don't know if you remember way back in the day, they were fiberglass. And I can't oh, yeah. tell you, still remember <laughs> the feeling I had when I had those first nails and I went to school. I made my mom not let me do PE and just so I could keep them really nice. <laughs> and that is when my love for beauty started. Um, and I wanted to do it obviously after school and whatever, but I didn't go down that route at first. I went down the business route, so got a degree in business, that type of thing, but still had like the urge to do beauty. Mm. So I went and trained like evenings, weekends, took time off work, that type of thing, and built it up from there. And here we are 15 years later. My business is 15 years old on Monday. Oh, crikey. Well, happy birthday to the business. <laughs> Thank you. That's brilliant. So the topic for today is, you know, you said you do a lot of advanced skincare and semi-permanent mm-hmm. makeup. So we want to kind of pick your brains about all, all, all things skincare. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my first question is, uh, what skincare is pertinent to do anyway for customers, even before you consider any advanced treatment? You need to make sure you've got what you're doing at home down to a T. The one thing that people confuse is a skin condition and a skin type, two different things. So they'll got, they've got they got oily skin, which could be come from dehydrated skin, but they'll go and get products for oily skin. Does that make sense? Mm. Um, so the best thing to do is get, there's loads of um, academies and clinics that do free consultations. Have a chat with a professional, go away and get the right products for your skin, work on a home care routine. Mm. Because although you can have treatments in clinics, there that's only 50% of the whole the whole thing. The other 50% is you doing your bit at home. So if you can start off by getting that right, you're going to get better results from the treatments you have in clinic. So make sure you've got a good cleanser. Make sure you things like when you're taking your makeup off, have a new flannel every day. Literally go to Tesco, go to Primark, get seven flannels use a fresh one every day just so we're not transferring bacteria and putting mm. it back on. it's the little the little habits if we can tweak they make a massive difference so we've got things like cleansers toners moisturize and one thing that is the most important is spf all year round at least fact 30 plus that's one thing i never really picked up on actually is the fact that you should probably wear uh sun cream on mm. your face or at least like the most and skin that's it. always shown like the back of your hands and stuff like yeah, that all yeah. the time I had no clue that you're supposed to do it all the time because I just thought oh well the mm. sun the way it's fine I know a lot of people think like that because we live in sunny England mm, yeah <laughs> it's, always raining. it's cloudy but today I don't I don't have to worry about it when actually there is still some like UV rays going on it's just yeah, not as high UV rays, all of it yeah Mm, absolutely crazy so now moving on to when they want to possibly get some advanced uh treatments you know what Mm -hmm. could customers ensure they're doing to get the best outcome for those treatments for like pre-treatment and post-treatment as well so again having that free consultation or consultation some people charge whichever really get the education out of it you need to ask the person the professional um, why they would recommend X, Y, and Z treatment, what you can do beforehand to enhance that to get better results, and what you're going to do after that. So from a business perspective, so if someone books in with me, automatically my booking system will send them pre-advice. Mm. So what to do, links on products, what we spoke about in the plan, things to avoid. So don't come straight from the gym, so you're hot and sweaty or don't have some beds for like a week before. Or if you've been on holiday and just landed back and obviously you've got a suntan, all those types of things. Even things down to now, the guidance we've had sent out with COVID and vaccine. So leave two weeks either side, so before and after. And there's all these little things where you've been and had medication from your doctor, 
things down to basic antibiotics can affect treatment. So mm. make sure you disclose all this information in your consultation. So again, you get the best advice from your practitioner and then get good advice pre and post. So as I said, from a business perspective, uh, my system will send pre and post as soon as you've booked in. So you've got it, you're aware, you're educated on what not to do and what to do before and after. Mm. That's very key. Is there um, an example you can give maybe? So, for example, if someone, uh, you know, who's been on, who does regular like sunbed tanning yeah. Yeah. Um, and they were going for a treatment, you know, obviously if they didn't listen to the advice, what could possibly happen? There's so many things that can happen. Um, we can misdiagnose skin because it's not the true reflection of your skin colour. You might have um, have pigmentation that we miss because obviously you've got a tan and it's covering those bits so we could potentially give you the wrong treatment because we guide on yes we'll ask you about your lifestyle and what you do all the rest of it but we also go off what we can see mm. but that your eyes never lie so if you're coming in and it's not a true reflection of yourself you're potentially going to get the wrong could get the wrong treatment yeah no that's definitely key and it's also you know but then if they're not happy and it's like well you need to be truthful with your practitioner from the start really you can't just hide it uh, you yeah. know, you see some people kind of, you know, I think a classic one I see is when people go into a hair salon and they say, oh, you know, I haven't really used box dye recently. And that's why they do, you know, test strands because they need to see how it's going to react with whatever is on their hair. And half the time, you know, they are lying and it saves the hairdresser a lot of um, issues because it's like, you know, well, uh, you know, we've done a test strand and actually you were lying. <laughs> <laughs> So no, people do lie to... sometimes, they really do. Yeah. And they're like, you haven't been on holiday. And I'm like, I've just seen on your Instagram, you landed back 48 hours ago, mm. on. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's also super key as well because, you know, you may not get the result that you want because of, you know, there's like difference in your skin or a tan and stuff like that. Um, no, it's absolutely brilliant advice. So is there any sort of brands or key ingredients we need to look out for for using skincare products because obviously you know you uh people go to consultations they may recommend like a certain line and stuff like that but I guess for mm -hmm. those who are looking from high street to high end like mm -hmm. what kind of ingredients we need to be looking at that would be beneficial to your skin yeah I get that so depending on your budget and it's I'd, it's important that you think about this from a client perspective before you go to your consultation because nine times out of ten almost 100% that the practitioner is going to recommend products. Mm. Um, now, obviously, if we're doing medical grade treatments alongside comes medical grade products. Mm. But if you don't have the budget for that, we do have the knowledge to say X, Y and Z on the high street. You'll get some results from that. Yes, it might not be as good as what we recommend, like the medical grade products, but it's going to help you. Things like hyaluronic acid, mm. hydration. Every single person needs hydration. And looking for things with like peptides and ceramides in there and um, hydrating properties as well. And it's the active ingredient. Mm. And generally the the SPF and hydration, I can't tell you how important they are together. So just to, just to note, just yeah. definitely remember SPF and moisturization above all Literally. else. And to wash your face. I know this might seem like a thing that everyone does, but you'll be surprised that a lot of people don't. They say, I'll just take my makeup off with a wipe. Or I leave it on to the next day because it actually looks really nice today. And I'm like, okay, so here's a flannel. You go in there and you take that. <laughs> and then I will do the rest. Yeah, you, you must wash your face. Simple mm. thing. Change your pillowcase. No, it's silly. It's, it's quite silly because it's like, you know, I know some people just kind of like, oh, yeah, I just wash my face like once a day. And there's me um over here with like acne prone skin and stuff. And I'm like, um, you, is that good for you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean I guess it might work for them because their skin looks absolutely great or maybe they're just lying and actually they do like a 10-step routine in the morning that makes them look mm. so glowy but um, I think it's so key to remember that you know a surface wipe doesn't necessarily get into like the nooks and crannies and the pores and everything else where you need to do no, it a proper wash. It doesn't and also the thing is with wipes obviously um, you can wipe your makeup off with a makeup wipe or a cleansing balm, whichever. And then the advice is, have you heard of double cleanse? Go and wash your face to get the rest off. Because essentially, yes, you can. You look like you've removed a lot of your makeup, probably have, but there's still a little bit that with a wipe, you're moving from here to here. And that's all you're doing in the end. So you need to actually go and wash it off in the shower to get that off. Yeah. 
Uh, Stephanie Key. Um, could you tell me a bit more about your uh, clinic, like what, what you guys offer, what you get up to? Is there any kind of treatments do you like giving that's your favourite? My favourite treatments <laughs> are basically anything to the face, from yeah. chemical peels to LED light therapy to microneedling to dermaplaning. And I love that. I think a lot of my clients, because I... I am very specific with what I target. So a lot of people come to me with high pigmentation, acne, textured skin. Mm. They're the things that I can treat and I get excellent results from. So generally it's the LED light therapy, microneedling and chemical peels that I will target with them. And I really, 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 you ask my clients, strict home care routine. And I will know if they haven't followed it. <laughs> that's brilliant yeah, it sounds like, like you're just you're so invested as well like I think one thing that's so pertinent is being passionate about doing the treatments that you want to get those results mm. um so moving on then is there anything you'd like to add or maybe you know do a little cheeky little plug in our podcast a cheeky little plug oh, I didn't think about that <laughs> no the only thing I want to like reinforce is the post like the pre um care and after care please just always follow it and from a practitioner perspective we have to kind of like cover our backs so use your booking system to automatically send things out and mm. so mine I use fresher as a mm. booking system so as soon as you book as I said it sends both things out and they have to tick that they've read it so yeah. you know so I always make sure that my clients have done that I say can you read through these forms blah 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 before you come into consultation then we'll consult from there and their consultation form that's Literally. really key as well because it's yeah. almost like a form of like the beginning of like a consent form as well really a thousand like, percent. you want to make sure that you know and if they ticked it but then they didn't listen to it and it's like well you said you ticked it that you've read it so yeah, and I exactly. gave you this information so it's exactly that yeah, yeah. We, we go on quite a lot about the importance of consent form we work with uh faces consent uh, so they have got great uh, consultation forms and they're free yeah the forms are like really thorough them. really great and it's I think mm. so key to hammer in again and again like you know get the information to the client make sure that they've signed and understood and then if there is a problem it's like well you did read this and you've signed that you've read this and yeah and it covers I your was... back as well as a practitioner it does I will say I used a little bit of information from semi-permanent makeup um, for microblading from the face's consent and I had a solicitor come to me mm. for a consultation and she said I just want to say about your consultation forms in my head I was thinking oh my god like is <laughs> and she was like very thorough excellent mm. best one I've seen yet and I thought oh and what's the email faces and tell them <laughs> <laughs> we, we are so proud of it because we um yeah. we helped develop those consent forms alongside with the insurers as well so that's great especially with our insurance policies the insurers are happy especially if you use the app because we have um like an in sync specific one as well for our clients um, and any customers that buy a policy with us so no, it's really good that you've really got nice feedback straight from the source. <laughs> yeah, straight from the source. I was thinking, oh what's she going to say? <laughs> God, that's always a bit um, nerve-wracking. Brilliant. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I appreciate you taking no time out of your day for it. Thank you to my guest today, Hannah Kalita, for talking about skincare basics and treatments with us. If you're interested in learning more about her clinic or her training academy, please visit www.hannacalitabeauty.com I have been your host Dawn Cross and tune in next week for another episode. InSync is one of the UK's fastest growing insurance providers offering comprehensive cover for SMEs and the self-employed across the UK. Our expert team can tailor your insurance to meet your individual business needs and compare prices from our Lloyds of London approved partners. We offer a five-star service and have been FIFO Platinum Trusted winners four years in a row.